This channel and all its videos are non-profit and for the sole objectives of educational and teaching purposes only. We hope everyone enjoy and learn from them. Hello everyone, uh, Teacher Lim here. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and my channel and video once more. So uh, it's been quite a long while since my last video. So uh, for quite a long time, um, I already planned and wanted to make this video for everyone. So this is a, to me, this is a very important video on how to create or draw or write or make concept maps. So basically, concept maps are uh, introduced or used quite frequently in the learning of science, uh, especially primary school or even secondary school. But of course, concept maps are used not just in science, but uh, I've uh, seen them used before or seen them uh, being used before in other subjects like English, or even uh, subjects like geography or history or even mathematics. So, uh, but nonetheless, this is focused on a P3 topic uh, on diversity of uh, non-living things. So I will create, uh, as an example, a concept map on materials and the properties of materials. So uh, I will talk a bit uh, on concept mapping first before I demonstrate how uh, you can create or write or draw a concept map of your own so as usual uh, in my teaching uh, segment or my teaching parts or the slides that i've created uh, credits as usual goes to google images google wikipedia and the textbook uh, which the p3s are currently using uh, from marshall cavendish i got some ideas from there so credits also go to them uh, my pals are here, textbook, uh, of course, uh, on the topic of diversity. So, uh, let me go straight to concept maps. So, why, uh, you may be asking in your mind, why do we use concept maps? So, very simple. Uh, a concept map is uh, many a times used to link and connect ideas together. So, it is also a reflection of our own, le our own learning. So uh, what do I mean by this? So usually, usually, uh, concept map is done at the end of a topic or at the end of a chapter. So as we are creating a concept map, we also reflect what we have learned. And we also show others what we have learned. So it is also an idea, possible idea for assessment uh, for learning or even off learning. So that's how the reflection can come into play. Uh, and concept maps can very much uh, be used to show uh, how much someone has learned uh, in terms of the topic or, or the chapter that has just been learned. So uh, number three, of course, concept maps are a very good uh, tool or method, I would say, uh, to let someone or anyone uh, look at everything at just one look. Usually, it's just a one page. So I show it to everyone uh, the concept map using an A4 size paper later, or it could even be bigger. But the bigger it is, the more complicated it might get. So usually we want to summarize a concept map or create a concept map within an A4 page would be good enough. So uh, it is also a very good method of using pictures and words to represent ideas or, or main ideas uh, of what is learned uh, from the topic. So uh, moving along. It is also a very good summary of ideas of what is taught and learned uh, in any chapter or in, in any topic. So, uh, concept map definitely can be used uh, to summarize or, or, or to highlight main ideas together. And definitely, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, usually it's done at the end. Uh, usually it's done at the end. Personally, I feel it should be done at the end, where it's great for self-study, revision of your topics. And the concept maps, right, after you have created them, it's actually, uh, they are good revision uh, tools that you can revisit. So, for example, uh, let's say, for example, in which we are dealing with today, the topic of uh, materials and their properties. So, let's say we move on to the next chapter. I think the next chapter is on interactions or magnex currently in primary three uh, science. So, let's say uh, after finishing Magnex or Interactions, we decided to go back and, and have a quick look at what we learned in uh, diversity of materials or even that of uh, living things. Uh, we can easily go back to the concept map and usually uh, it is a great way or, or great method to summarize all the ideas. So, one look, we can revisit and be reminded of uh, 
uh, what you have learned in previous topics. So now, uh, talking about why we have concept maps, so how about uh, how to actually create or draw concept maps? So uh, definitely, we, we usually move down from a bigger main idea or main title or topic to more smaller uh, ideas or subtopics. So usually we move from a bigger, broader ideas to smaller but also very important details and, and ideas. So that's how uh, we or at least I usually create a concept map. So usually we have a start and an end in mind. So before you actually even create your concept map, right, um, you should know uh, roughly how you want to start it and when you're going to end it at. Uh, otherwise, the concept map can a bit can become a bit too long-winded, too much, and too overwhelming with details and ideas. So uh, that's why I keep mentioning that usually concept map should be done uh, in the begin uh, sorry at the end of a topic rather than the beginning. But of course, we can also do it at the beginning. For example, um, just as an introduction to to expose ourselves to more ideas, so and so forth, before we move on to the actual topic itself. So I mean, uh, concept maps uh, can definitely be used at the beginning or the end or even the middle during the topic as a revision. So it really up, it's up to individual preference, uh, up to uh, how you want to use or the purpose of your concept maps. Yeah. So uh, number four, so you must have a rough idea, like I mentioned, how the concept map should look like. So this is uh, very much uh, linked to the idea where you should have a start and an end in mind of how the concept map should look like. So uh, point number five, I think is very, very important. In a concept map, right? Uh, if you ask me, a concept map is basically a picture or diagram of words or even simple drawings. So they have to be very succinct or precise. If it's too long-winded, too many long sentences instead of uh, short phrases or, or one or two words, uh, the concept map can get really complicated and it really defeats its purpose. Because a concept map, as I mentioned uh, previously, is supposed to summarize your ideas, not to make your ideas even longer or, or even more difficult to read. So we need to use very precise words or phrases. We shouldn't even be using sentences in our concept maps. Right? Of course, uh, then again, I can mention many times, this is based on the personal experience or opinions of teachers or lecturers or even professors. So for me, as a primary school teacher, I would think, um, you know, it's better to just use words, especially at a primary school level, where long sentences can really confuse students uh, and might not be that uh, beneficial when it comes to revision or revisits of topics. So last but definite, definitely not least, uh, I think before you can, you can actually create a concept map, you need to be very, um, be quite, I, would say, I wouldn't say very, but quite experienced uh, with the knowledge and what was taught in the topic or the chapter before you can actually create uh, a concept map based on that chapter. So usually, uh, as I mentioned before many times, I do, it, uh, I do a concept map at the end of the topic uh, where it's more like a reflection, a revision of the topic that was just learnt. Now, uh, moving along, so uh, many people, even myself, tend to ask what is the difference between a concept map and a mind map? So uh, online, uh, I easily pulled out some images of how a concept map or a mind map will look like. Now, if you look at the main difference, right? So the mind map is you just link ideas, right? You link ideas. So that there is no linking back of ideas. But if you look at the concept map, I feel personally, the difference is uh, the ideas can be really interlinked together. Uh, concepts can be interlinked. So that is the main difference between a concept map and a mind map. So there's more linkages between uh, the different parts of a concept map. But if you ask me, right, these are very small, uh, minute differences. But of course, if you really must know uh, the difference between a concept map and mind map, here it is. But if you ask me, I think they are rather similar. So um, Usually we say we want to draw a mind map, but in the end we might end up drawing a concept map. Or even when we say we draw a concept map, we might end up drawing a mind map. But nonetheless, all these maps, uh, they serve their purpose uh, of linking our ideas together, summarizing, summarizing our ideas, uh, making uh, the topic easier to revise as we refer back to these mind maps or concept maps, so and so forth. Alright, so uh, even concept maps, right, uh, they, you can actually use drawings 
to represent your ideas. I think these are beautiful, fantastic, uh, so, some of the beautiful, fantastic concept maps that I found online. So I really wanted to show everyone. So you can see easily um, the topics. So this is on traveling. Uh, this, I'm not quite sure what the topic is. I just uh, brought it out uh, because they have really nice drawings. So this, uh, you can easily see that it's a topic of global warming, solving global warming. The title is there. So how, how you can solve global warming, the different methods of solving global warming. And of course, this uh, is about time. You know, uh, not just time, but time management. So you can see here, uh, concept maps can actually be created with pictures and drawings as well. So uh, just trying to show everyone the different kinds of concept maps. And of course, you can use softwares. Or computers to create concept maps but personally if you ask me right, I don't really like to I wouldn't really uh, like to create a concept map with computer or softwares uh, because uh, if you ask me concept maps uh, I think they should be drawn on a clear piece of paper especially I think in the primary school level children like to draw students like to draw and write so uh, I mean it's also up to individual preference uh, if you want to use softwares there are many softwares out there that allows people to create concept maps and mind maps uh, or you can also draw or write your own concept map so for today i will be demonstrating on how to draw and create two concept maps actually so i will uh, demonstrate first uh, how to create a concept map on the topic of materials and objects then uh, i will move on to creating a second concept map but this time around is more of materials and their properties so the first concept map I'm going to create today is materials and objects. So the objects, uh, what kind of materials they're made of, uh, vice versa, and materials with a bigger focus on their properties. So I hope you stay with me in this video and I will demonstrate to all of you how to draw these two concept maps. Hope you enjoy the process of uh, me join the concept map and hopefully you can follow as well and create your own beautiful and excellent concept maps all right so i will be drawing or creating a concept map on the types of materials and examples of how or, or what objects are actually made from them so i start off the title from here probably at the center or the top center Types of materials and examples of objects made uh, from them or from these materials. So probably I will circle this up or you can box this up. So uh, probably I will start off with wood here. So wood is a common material uh, to make things like uh, doors. Um, there, is, there are also uh, fences that are made of wood so uh, of course we all know fences could be made of uh, a metal and coated with uh, rubber or plastic as well now a very bigger uh, a bigger group of uh, things that are made of wood would be definitely furniture so examples of furniture would include uh, bookshelves then we also have the very common a uh, tables, chairs, and then of course we have uh, benches. Usually in schools or, or public places as well. So I have uh, wood there. So probably let me move on to glass. So glass is usually made uh, used to make uh, bottles. All right, glass bottles and then uh, glassware as well. So glassware could include 
uh, could I mean could include things like your plates, your bowls, uh, or even buses that are made of a glass. Then uh, I think next on I want to move on to rubber. So uh, rubber usually we use it to make balloons. Then also a uh, gloves. So especially during this time of COVID nineteen. Uh, gloves are usually used uh, by, by doctors or even nurses but nowadays even uh, food handlers or store holders also use gloves and then uh, how can we forget a uh, rubber boots so this material is usually used to make uh, things that are waterproof right then we have uh, tires I don't know how to spell them or tires. I think they're all correct spelling. Just different whether the difference is whether they are American or English or just put wheels. So these are some of the things that are made of uh, rubber. So uh, I'd like to move on to another very common material, plastic. Alright, uh... So uh, probably let me link them up so that they will look more like a concept map rather than a mind map. So even tires or wheels are known to be made of plastic. Uh, even balloons as well. Or even gloves made of plastic as well. Or even your boots could be made of plastic. Right then. Uh, oh yeah, we even have bottles that are made of uh, plastic. So this is a very good example of how a concept map can look like. So usually plastic, we also use them to make uh, containers or, or your lunch boxes. Right, and then uh, we have uh, pills, buckets. All, right, all these are made of plastic. Also because of the property of uh, them being uh, waterproof. Oh, I think it's uh, kind of intersected here. So, uh, I mean, we try not to crisscross unless the concept map becomes too uh, messy. So, I think these two lines, I can indicate it as just side by side. Then, uh, of course, another very common uh, material known for its durability or strength or hardness for that matter, metals. So uh, probably you, they're usually used to make your, your vehicles like buses, your cars, very common, or ships. So uh, I think another common example is your utensils and your crockery, your fork and spoon and your plates. They are metal ones as well. So uh, I think your utensils and crockery can also be made of plastic definitely so i can link this to plastic as well uh i think the next one i want to talk about is a fabrics all right fabrics uh your cloth your cotton your nylon all this all fall under fabrics then uh, of course they are used to make things like bags uh clothes right then uh, oh yeah curtains and then uh, I can link this to plastic as well I mean it depends on where your curtains are uh, but shower curtains are usually made of plastic so they are also curtains made of plastic so usually those uh, curtains that you find in your living room or your bedroom or your your uh, uh, dining room usually is uh, made of uh, the curtains are usually made of cloth or fabrics so uh, oh yeah one more material so uh, I mean everybody knows that there are many different kinds of materials out there so uh, that's why I decided to narrow or focus this on just primary tree signs so this will be the last material so this will be ceramics usually they are used to make your pots uh, your vases 
alright, or, or even uh, your plates, uh, cooking pots, clay pot they call it, yep. So there you have it, um, a very um, simple uh, yet um, I would say uh, effective and usable concept map for students, especially in primary 3, to revise on the subtopic. Of course, the topic is on materials, but the sub subtopic will be materials and, and uh, the examples or objects that are made from them, as mentioned in the, in the title, in the middle. So there you have it. I have the concept map uh, of materials and objects. Hope everyone can have a good look here. So, um, I think I will move on to the next uh, concept map would be on uh, materials and their properties. So, probably this one. Uh, I hope you have a good look already. So, I'll move on uh, to the concept map of materials and their properties. I will use a purple pen this time round, the purple pen. So, uh, as usual, the title will be in the middle, somewhere in the middle top. So I will put it as types of materials and their properties. So probably I would circle or box this up again. So uh, probably I start off with the material. So probably I start off with wood first. So wood, um, usually they are known to be stiff. So stiff uh, is the opposite of uh, flexible. And then they are also known to be strong. That's why uh, in the previous concept map, um, they are used. Uh, I wrote down that they are used to make furniture. Of course, uh, most of the time they are actually waterproof. Uh, but I think the natural form is not, so usually it's a combination of plastic onto the wood. Uh, so different combination there, but I'll just take it as mostly is wood covered uh, or protected with plastic. And then usually, usually, usually it will float on water. So these are usually the properties of wood. Then I'll move on to glass now, glass. So one of the very important uh, property of glass is transparent so it's used to make things like um, windows um, or even your your windscreen in the car or even your spectacles and then uh, of course they have to be waterproof all right to withstand rain water so they do not absorb water so that's the meaning of waterproof and then usually they are stiff and, and they do break easily but I would not write down break easily because or, or fragile because uh, these are the properties that we look for when making particular object with this uh, material rather than not uh, make this uh, object of this material because of an undesirable uh, property so I, I'm listing down all the more desirable ones so rubber of course usually we use rubber because it is flexible opposite of stiff and then uh, of course they are usually waterproof that's why we use rubber to make things like your rubber boots or your rubber hose right then we uh, usually usually rubber also floats on water I mean, because it is waterproof, so it doesn't absorb water, so it doesn't sink. So I guess that's the idea. So there you have it. I have the first three uh, materials and their properties. And then, of course, let's move on quickly to metals. Alright, for metals. Uh, so because metals, there are many different kinds. So maybe let me list down a few. More common ones like iron, steel, uh, copper, or even aluminium, and the rarer ones like gold or even silver. Okay, but the list goes on. Uh, but as mentioned, uh, we're not supposed to have too many. 
uh, in a concept map, thus it gets confusing and gets overwhelming. Too many words there, too many, too much information and content. So I try to keep it as brief as possible. So they're definitely uh, most of the time known to be stiff, because your common aluminium foil is more flexible. So usually they are strong, uh, durable. That's why I use it to make things like ships or vehicles and cars. So usually they are waterproof, of course, um, after long exposure to water, metals usually rust unless they are stainless steel or they are protected. And usually, usually metals sink in water. But of course, uh, things like ships and all, they are made of metal, so probably um, they might float it instead of just sink then we will move on to ceramics all right so ceramics usually they are waterproof that's why we use them to make things like vases or your pots or even your your cooking pot or even your flower pots usually they are stiff and they are also usually they are more associated with strong even though we know they can be broken easily if we drop them from a certain height so there's there so i have two more materials with me so stay with me uh, let's move on to fabrics now fabrics so uh, some of the common fabrics are cloth uh, nylon or even polyester I mean the list goes on uh, but I'll just focus on this few types of fabrics for now then of course uh, your school uniform your clothing usually they are flexible which makes them comfortable to make things like clothing or even blankets and bed sheet uh, so they can be made uh, waterproof or non waterproof that's why I purposely uh, put down nylon or polyester. So these are the more uh, well-known fabrics that are combined with elements of plastic to make it more waterproof. Alright, so nowadays fabrics can be waterproof or non-waterproof. And then usually, usually they are strong so they don't tear easily. That's why we can always wash our clothing and wear them again. All right, then we have, a, I think the last one I'll touch on is plastics. All right, then usually they are, I mean not usually, they are always waterproof. That's the main characteristic or property of material that we make use of, of plastic to make waterproof objects or products. Then usually they are flexible in the form of plastic bags or ziplock bags but it can also be stiff in the form of harder plastics like I mentioned previously your pills, your buckets uh, or even your furniture that's made of plastics so uh, I think plastics can either be transparent or even translucent or even opaque which doesn't allow light to pass through so it really depends on the purpose of the plastic of the object you are creating using the plastic so there you have it i think i will stop here this is the completion of my concept map on the type of materials and their properties of course there are many other types of materials out there uh, i think i didn't put in things like uh, paper uh, or, or even other materials Usually they are a combination of both, uh, so even paper or cardboard or, or, or even uh, other materials that might be out there. Uh, so I don't try to make an exhaustive, uh, exhaustive list here, a complete list, so I just try to name a few uh, examples here. So as mentioned, I decided to focus on more of the topic in the primary three topic uh, of materials. So these are the materials there are and their properties. So uh, I hope uh, you have a good idea of how to create uh, the different concept maps with two examples in this video. 
So I hope that with these two concept maps, uh, you give you a good idea of how to create even more concept maps for your own learning and your own revision as you come to study or revise your topics. So I hope uh, you like this video. I'm going to end off here. Thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you like this video and do continue to watch or even subscribe or like my videos if you do enjoy them. So this has been Teacher Lim here on the topic of concept maps. Hope you learned something here and enjoy this video. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye here. Take, take care and thank you everyone. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. See you.